Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson of Global Trends course. This is Nagasa from Sanyi Academy. Today I am going to teach Global Trends course on the lesson of level of analysis of international relations. If you are new for the channel, please start by liking and subscribing uh, the video. And if you are already a member to this academy, start by liking, commenting and sharing this video. I thank you for your cooperation. You can uh, follow this academy through social media links such as Facebook with the name Sanyi Academy, Telegram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and WhatsApp. Having said this, I just go to the today's lesson about levels of analysis in the international relation. In the previous lesson, we have seen about actors in the international relations and those actors are state and non-state actors. When we analyze international relations, we are not going to talk without the involvement of these actors. What are those levels of analysis that we have to look into to understand the whole picture of international relations? The traditional or conventional international relation was more concerned to make distinction between levels of analysis of international relations that we are going to talk today. It was simply looking at the international relation from the whole picture or from the grand picture and it did not break it into uh, simple and understandable uh, categories. These uh, analysis are important to make understanding and also help individuals to get the picture of the national relations. Clarity with the level of analysis can prevent us from randomly gathering evidences across different levels in pursuit of an answer to our question. Individuals may have questions about the international relation and international system. In order to get answer to our question, it is important to look at these levels to give us understanding and comprehensive knowledge of these terms or this issue. So we cannot simply understand randomly without breaking this international relation into different levels of considerations. So what are those levels of considerations? We'll see. From 1950s onwards, more and more international relations scholars attempt to specify the focus of their analysis more clearly. Starting from 1950s, especially during the Cold War, scholars of international relations wanted to break down international relations into different levels so they can understand and specify those levels to create a well pictured understanding. The international relations scholars have tried much to get clear analysis of these international relations. The most prominent scholar in the international relations that we can talk of here is Kenneth Wallace, who is the prominent and has a deep contribution in the international relations. In his writing of 1959, which was titled as The Man, Man, the State, and the War, a theoretical analysis. He introduced an analytical framework to study the international relations. In that study, he distinguished between what he referred to as different images of an issues. These are the individuals, the state, and the international system. He broke down them into three headings so as to create clear understanding for the study of international relations. So he distinguished these three levels. So his contribution to the discipline generated interest in the analyzing the international system at the place of interaction between states. In the previous time, I say the states are the primary actors in the international relations and also they are uh, prominent and powerful actors. Kenneth Walls has helped that individuals, scholars, and people should understand that 
international relations as a discipline is the uh, field of study which helps individuals to understand that states are undertaking interactions in this international system, which we have said anarchic in its nature. And let us see these levels of analysis one after the other. The first level of analysis that we look at today is the individual level of analysis. The individual level of analysis is basically connected with the human nature, individual psychological makeup. At this level, we look at the behaviors, motivations, beliefs, and orientations of the individual in affecting in a particular international phenomenon. So individuals have likes and dislikes. Individuals have interests and they're also disinterested in some actions. So at this point, we are focusing on individual, individual decision makers and actors on the behalf of the state. So we look at the implication of human nature here. We focus on the psychology and emotions of people's action and decisions, such as, for example, the fear they have, their visions, their access to information and capacity to make difference. The fear of leaders, the fear of policy analysis, the fear of policymakers, the fear of government. We are going to look at those because the way they understand international relations, their visions, actions, and decisions affect their international relations. What are their visions? What are their fears? What sort of access do they have to all this information? And what capacity they have to make difference in the international contact? We focus on the psychological factors, which are important to help us also uh, analyze the foreign policy of the country, which is basically made by individuals accountable of making it. So at this point, we are focusing on the mindsets and perceptions of political leaders and the key actors in the decision and their behaviors. For example, let us look at the psychology of uh, President of Russia, Putin, and let us look at the psychology of President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. The, these people have their own visions. They have, have their own behaviors. These people have their own perception of the international relations, the international system. This directly affects how the international relation is going at the international, international, in, the, in the international system. This is very important to analyze how the behaviors and the actions of these individuals affect the interaction between or among the states. Concerning the war that was broke out between Russia and Ukraine, leaders of different countries are reacting to it. They are taking sides. Their perception, their actions and speech and psychological preferences are making a difference to the interaction that they are having with each other. The so psychology of individual, the nature of human uh, attitude and preference affects how they interact with each other. Perceptions of political leaders and political actors influences their decision and behaviors. What sort of decision do they make regarding some issue that requires international intervention. What sort of behavior do they have? Currently, the Russian president is accused of using Iranian drones to attack Ukrainians. So at this point, the leaders of Western countries accuse Iran of supporting Putin war against Ukraine. This is a perception they have toward these leaders of uh, Russia and Iran and others. And the North Korean president, Kim Jong-un, is also showing his behavior of defending his nation using nuclear as a priority weapon. This is how leaders react to the international situation, how they act, what sort of behavior they have towards anything that happens in the international system. They say, they say, 
we are being attacked. They say we are facing wars. So this is a very dangerous implication that the uh, collision between the West and the East is making. So the behavior and decisions of the leaders plays a significant role. Their politicians, what sort of perception do they have? Diplomats and bankers, because these are the basis of nation's uh, politics and economy. The leader of another state to negotiate. When they negotiate with leaders, what sort of behavior and actions do they make? How the set of officials, politi politicians, and decision makers operate. This affects international relations. The second level of analysis is the group level analysis. International relation is not only affected by the perception and psychological makeup of leaders or politicians, but also the influence of groups and actors combined together influence the international relations. This level analysis attempt to break the analysis down to certain kinds of groups, how they related to the state level and where they position themselves with respect to the global dimensions of the issue they are dealing with. There is also group actions, group responses to international relations, group uh, actions towards something happening. At this point, they position themselves with respect to the issue and global dimensions. With respect to the issue of interventionism that was proposed by the uh, governments of the United States of America in the issues of Ethiopia, different groups were just protesting against the movement that the American government was making. And, and, and civil societies, actors of different nature, were playing their significant role. So at this point, the psychological factors also has great contribution to group decision making and group uh, level analysis. But the group level analysis would be more interested in the actions of groups of individuals those individuals who came together to uh, make impact in certain issue or on certain aspect, make a pressure to make changes in the international relations. These are the actions of groups of individuals such as lobbying groups and the way they influence national decision making on an issue. The lobbying groups, those who try to influence government to make changes in policies to make changes in laws and the action the government makes has a role to play to influence the government to take sides and take part in the international relations. They influence the government to do what sort of actions benefit the country and its citizens as much as possible. Also, all voters of the country and the way they express their views on general, in the general elections Basically, when uh, individuals compete for power, they have their own policies and also plans, party plans, that they are going to uh, implement when they win the seat in the government system. They also present their uh, foreign relations policies. They also present as, as, as respects of policies that are important to uh, construct the nation's economy, political stability, and uh, other sort of uh, changes. So at this moment, voters cast their votes so as to have a belief in the leader. Voters can influence the decisions of the government and also express their views through general election that the person they are voting or the party they are voting is going to do those things that the voters need. They influence by their voices. They influence by their votes. That is what need to be considered when we are talking about group level analysis of international relations. Political parties also pick up on the issue in their campaigns or social movement forming to counter the effect of the crisis on society. Uh, currently, when the government of Ethiopia was making negotiation with the TPLF leaders in South Africa, the people of Ethiopia supported the government that peace is more important than war. 
And beyond that, they just express their gratitude that they need to uh, make the government, make sure the national interest of the government should be maintained and the interests of the people should be maintained. And other political parties were also influencing the government to make sure the national interests of the, the country or the government of Ethiopia and the people of Ethiopia was guaranteed and maintained. This is the way they influence. Activists, pressure groups, and the likes also influence the global debate about the winners and losers of globalization, capitalism, environmentalism, security, terrorism, and so forth. In the Western country, we see people influencing government to modify policies, to modify the use of carbon, to modify the use of uh, uh, factories and industries that emit fumes that would contaminate the environment. This kind of pressures, groups, uh, influence the government to take decisions that are in favor of the people or the group that they think they represent. This is very important to see in the analysis of international relations. And the third level that we need to look into is the state level. Primarily, the state is a major actor in the international relation. Uh, before the coming of contemporary international relations that included not the state actor, the state was the only and dominant actor in the international relation. It was the mover and the shaker of international relations. Everything was undertaken according to the interests of the states. When we look at international relations, we need to also look at the sets level analysis, how sets reacts to the international relation and international actions. This is very important. This level, referred to as the relative state centrism of the discipline. As a discipline, the international relation is focused on the interaction between states, state and non-state actors, international government organizations, multinational corporations, citizens, individuals, and so forth. So in this aspect, when we are talking about set level analysis, we are focusing on the issue of the state, the role of the state in the international system, international relations. So this discipline, when we say state centrism, that means the discipline focus on the state's role in the international relations. International relations scholars regard states as a central unit of analysis and conceive of it as a point of reference for other types of actors. The role of the state in the international relations is very important and key. They are the primary actors in the international relations. Bear in mind that state is a primary actor. The international system by itself is built on the foundation of states. States are the cornerstone of the international system. It is sometimes called the inter-state system. So in this case, they are the central unit of analysis of international relations because they are independent, sovereign, and also responsible to facilitate any possible means to include even other non-state actors. As actors also depend on the interest and the feeling of the states. The state is seen as a framework that captures society and as a main point of reference for individuals, guaranteeing the individual right and fulfilling the social interests and need well-being in the mandate of the state because it is a political entity that has the ultimate power to decide about the fate of people and the national integrity of the country. These entities, political entities, are responsible to maintain the national interests of the people. Without government, without a state, we cannot achieve our national interest. That is why leadership is playing a significant role in the maintenance of international relations. In this case, this level analysis international relations in the context of anarchic feature of the international system. We have said in the previous time, if you remember, 
I said the international system is anarchic. What does anarchy mean? We have talked about that. International system is anarchy mean there is no internationally sovereign body that governs the behavior and actions of the state. There is no government. There is no central body that controls and maintains the behavior of the state. In this anarchic system, it is the state which decides the stability of the world. Even the, the United Nations system does not have authority to intervene in the matters of states unless they uh, require the United Nations to interfere in this case. It is the relationship of states in this aspect is maintained in this anarchic international system. The state acts in the arena of its officials, politicians, and decision makers. The mind and the brain of the state is a government. The government is headed by politicians, by scholars, and officials who make decisions about the fate of the people and the country. At this point, states are represented. They speak through their representatives. They speak through their actors. They speak through their political officials. This is a way they make influences in the international system. That is what has to be taken into account. And a state level analysis might be interested to look at the actions and decisions of the state, their foreign policy, how they cooperate, and the geographical position. The actions they take, the decisions they make, foreign policy approach they use, they cooperate, and also geographical positions plays a significant role in terms of international relations analysis. Contemporary political life is managed in the state framework. Issues like national security, domestic unity, internal stability plays a significant role. Because of globalization, everything is interconnected and the states are interdependent. The situation that is taking place in Ukraine now is affecting the whole system. It is already at the door of every nation. It is knocking the economy, the politics, and the security of every nation. So at this point, the contemporary political system is determined by the state, which is also a critical actor in the international relations. And there are also the primary kind of actors in the international organizations, such as the United Nations system. States are sovereign and also they have the right and also obligation to take international responsibilities. There is no authority, there is no power above the state. They are the final and the sole authority in the international system. Max Weber, the German sociologist, says uh, states have the right to the monopoly of violence states has the right an exclusive right to use physical force to maintain peace and stability that is what we call a state is the sovereign agent in the international system that is why we say the international system is found on the state's interest a state level analysis might be interested to look at state as actors in their own right, in their own interests, and also they have certain preferences in the international system. It might be economic preferences, it might be political security or trade preferences. We don't know that. But they are actors. They look at their actions and decisions. So when we analyze the international relations, we look at the actions and decisions of the state. We look at how states interact with each other to deal with the crisis. That means their foreign policy, how they build their suggestion and react to international development and trends. So what is the perceptions and suggestion of states towards the conflict between Ukraine and uh, Russia? What is the reaction and suggestion of state to the nuclear proliferation 
that is going on between the West and the East. What is the reaction of states to the development is going on in the European Union? What are the reactions of state from different corners of the world to the reaction or to the actions of the West towards the global economy? These are the issues that we need to take into account to get the picture of international relations, how they cooperate in the framework of international organizations how they cooperate in the international system of organizations like United Nations, World Bank, World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, how they cooperate with that, how do they look at the global issues, how we look at the same as a competitors or antagonists to dominate the world economy. Realists say competition and antagonism is the characteristics of the international system. States in the anarchic international system compete with each other. So there is a competition and antagonism. A powerful state dominate the system. So how we look at the states' interactions as a competitors and antagonists or cooperative uh, aspect is very determined. We need to pay careful attention to what kinds of sets are we looking at in the analysis of international relations at the uh, set level. The political order of the state should be considered, their geographical position, their historical ties, their experience and their economic standing has to be well understood. It will likely also look at the foreign policy of state, the approach to practice of interacting with each other, what sort of foreign policy do they have. Um, the United States of America, for example, follows the status quo uh, policy, foreign policy approach. That means maintaining the uh, existing international order and system for its own benefit. While Russia and China prefers the revisionist policy, which means they want to revise the international system in their own betterment. In their own advantage. So we have to see these kind of things to make analysis at state level. Key indicators of foreign policy of the state would be the policy proposed and decided by the government, statement of top policies, politicians, the role and behavior of diplomats and their bureaucratic structures are very important to look at. The policy proposed by the government which is decided by the government organs and decision-making powers Statement of top level politicians towards each other or towards the uh, relationship with the country, uh, and also the roles they play by diplomats, uh, ambassadors, and the attaches uh, in different countries also an important uh, input in the analysis of international relations at the state's level. And the final level of analysis that we need to look at is the system level analysis. When we say system level analysis, we are talking about international system, global system, simply. So what sort of behaviors and issues should we look at here at the system level? The system level perspective would like to conceive the global system as a structure within which state corporate, it is a structure, within which state corporate, uh, they also compete in that structure. They also confront each other on the issues of their national interest in that system. The international system is the system or the field in which states corporate, compete and confront. The primary factor behind these all actions is national interest. National interest, in a sense, is a economic, political, security, diplomatic interest that the country wants to maintain in its relation with the rest of the countries in the international system. So at this point, this system is very crucial to the advantage 
as well as this advantage of the states. So they have to take care how they react to any movement in the international system. You might visualize it as the level above the state. The system level of analysis is the level beyond the state or above the state. The grand system in which states elements interact with each other. So when we look at the system level of analysis, we have to focus on the distribution of power among the states. How power is distributed in that international system. Is it unipolar? bipolar or multipolar because this affects the interaction of the states in the international relations. If the international system is dominated by unipolarism, then there is power which is concentrated in the hands of single superpower. So this has its own impact on the movement and actions of the state in the international system. If the power is concentrated in the hands of two superpowers and the international system is a system of bipolarity, then there are two superpowers which are antagonistic to each other. So the state has to take side to the either of that. There will be block formations and one has to be the beneficiary and the other has to be the loser. There is a loss and gain relationship in the bipolar system. One has to lose and the other has to win. Let me give you an example of Cold War that lasted from 1945 to 1991. The Eastern Bloc that was headed by USSR and the Western bloc that was led by the United States of America, each bloc had their own economic and political philosophy, which was basically antagonistic to each other. The were antagonism in this international system, and finally, the United States of America attained its uh, triumph in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, the world was experiencing bipolarism during the Cold War. And the third issue in the balance of power that we have to talk is about multipolarism. Multipolarism is very significant because in contemporary world, we are experiencing this balance of power. The international system is dominated by multiple powerful states. The United States of America, Russia, China, India, uh, North Korea, Iran, and so forth. Many of uh, Western countries are also in that uh, by a multipolar system. Several powerful states are there. So in this case, we have to focus on the balance of power to understand the way the international relationship is undertaken and how states are responding to that international uh, situations. Global circumstances or anarchy are seen to the condition, the ability and opportunity of individual states and groups of states to pursue their interests in the cooperative or competitive ways. We are going to see about the theoretical frameworks of international relations. From that, just uh, I want to talk about realism. Realism is a theoretical framework of international relations that says the international system is totally anarchic and competition is so tough. So states has to be powerful and become strong so as to manipulate the international system, it says. States are trying to maintain their own national interest, be it in a competitive way or cooperative way. This is something very important to tell us uh, about how we have to uh, analyze the international relations. So this anarchic international system itself dictates states to take 
their own actions against others because it is a state of fear. It's a state of competition. In competition, there is a winner and loser. So to avoid losing and be a winner, a state has to take competitive side and maintain their national gain. It says, uh, in terms of economy, in terms of political power, the state has to try to become powerful one. It should be feared, and other state has to succumb to its authority. An anarchic system is one that lacks central government, the sovereign, that regulates and controls what happens to state in their dealing with each other. When we look at domestic politics, there is a sovereign body that is responsible to maintain law and order in the country, the government, which is powerful and sovereign internally and externally. At this uh, point, the government managed everything, even to the maximum of using force, which is the exclusive right of the state to maintain orders in the domestic. Uh, politics. Compared to that domestic politics, the international system has no sovereign authority that is responsible to maintain the international order. So states are playing this role at their best interest. If it seems better to them, they follow, they take international obligations and also exercise their right. But if that action seemed to them unimportant, not important, and affected their national interests, they cease to agree and take that international obligations. International system anarchy is a central uh, character in which international relations is taking place. The in international system can be conceived of as made up of states group of states, organizations, societies, or individuals within or across those states. Um, we see individual states as an independent and sovereign ones. We see also states as groups forming some sort of organizations, such as European Union, such as African Union, Organization of American States, Arab Leagues, and so many of them. And also we see societies, civil societies, organizations like the uh, United Nations, like voluntary organizations, like IMF and World Bank. And also there are societies that influences the international system. So to determine the level of analysis at this point, at the system level, we have to focus on the following issues. Because the system level constant the global linkage that go beyond the single interaction between states. We have said the system level analysis is above state level analysis. It's beyond that. So it is more than the combination and the interaction of state that are at some point. So these are what sort of things we have to see. Number one, we have to see the balance of power between states and how that determines what happens in the global politics. In most part of the world and the history of the world, we have seen balance of power played a significant role. Where the power is concentrated, is it in the West or in the East Hand or in Africans? How this balance of power is affecting the interactions between states and how they are responding to it. So we need to focus on that. Development that are even outside the immediate control of any particular state or group of states, such as the global economy, transnational terrorism, or the internet. These are also an important thing because internet is changing the global interactions. In the traditional international relations, diplomats were uh, physically uh, contacting each other after a long and tiresome effort, it took a long period of time just to contact each other, to make decisions. Decisions were delayed and they were having troubles to just talk with each other. It was very hard, it was very difficult for them to come together and discuss about issues of their common concern. But today, internet has changed everything. 
they can talk to each other using diplomatic channels. They can talk to each other using medias and others. Internet has changed everything. The global economy also is another area that we have to see to understand how the international relation is taking place. The international system in itself is depending on those elements because states are interacting with each other in the global economy in terms of international trade. Global market is playing a significant role. Transnational terrorism, which is another security trade to the global security, is also an important area of cooperation. Environmentalism and many of them are an important area in which international relation is very important. This is the matter that everybody has to look into to understand the international relation. In this lesson, we have seen about levels of analysis of international relations. We cannot understand fully the international relations unless we take into account these four levels of analysis. Because the traditional uh, international relation was not able to give clear understanding and clear importance to the international relations. But we cannot achieve clear and well-refined information about what is going on in the international system. So to get that point, we have to break the international relations and into four main levels, individual level, group level, state level, and system level. These levels of international relations help us to fully grasp knowledge about the international relations. I want to remind you again, just please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video and help Sanyi Academy grow so this can help me and improve my presentation, my videos. So I want to thank you for your passions and cooperation. See you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.